Hey guys, welcome to the Kim Iverson Show. Thank you so much for being here. So these past few days have been tense, to say the least. We're now waiting for Israel to decide whether or not it's going to hit back at Iran after Iran rained missiles down on Israel. So let's go over exactly what happened and where we're at right now. The latest update from Iran promising to respond again even harsher if Israel responds to their response. So what happened was Iran finally struck Israel in an expected attack in retaliation for the Israeli strike on Iran's embassy in Syria, which killed 16 people. The attack involved about 170 drones, 30 cruise missiles, more than 120 ballistic missiles. Israel then used Arrow 3 and David sling systems to shoot down the incoming weapons. The American, British, and Jordanian air forces, and that's what was surprising is that Jordan, Jordan decided to join in on this, um, Jordanian Air Forces and their Navy helped to shoot down Iranian drones, while France intervened at the request of Jordan and deployed its Navy to provide radar coverage. Now, Jordan said that the reason why they intercepted, why they got involved, was because they were intercepting objects that were flying into its airspace to ensure its citizens' safety. But um, not really sure how much sense that makes. I mean, if you're going to be shooting down missiles that are going over your airspace, you would think then that the missiles would rain down on your citizens and cause more damage and potential injuries and deaths than just allowing them to, to cruise on over. But I think Jordan's, they're, they really don't want to be roped into a war. Their countries try to avoid that at all costs. I think we're going to have to kind of wait and see more reasoning for why Jordan decided to intervene on behalf of Israel, but probably to avoid a war between Iran and Israel, which Jordan would be in the middle of, quite literally. Israel said that 99% of the drones and the missiles were shot down by the coalition under what they're calling Operation Iron Shield. They said most of the missiles were shot down before they even entered Israeli airspace. However, a later U.S. official stated that at least nine Iranian missiles had struck two Israeli air bases. Some of the ballistic missiles were shot down in space by the aero system. Early information was that only a few missiles were not shot down. One caused minor damage to the Nevitim Air Base in southern Israel, which remained operational. And uh, there was one injury. There was a seven-year-old Israeli Bedouin girl who was struck and injured by part of a missile, which is terrible. Um, 31 other people either suffered from minor injuries while rushing to protected areas or they were treated for anxiety. They had some anxiety over the missiles. You could imagine the anxiety that the Gazans are under if... This one attack from Iran caused these people to rush to the hospital for anxiety. Um, the Gazans only wish that they had that sort of luxury. The people that are going to the hospital in Gaza, uh, you, you cannot walk into, well, you can't walk into a hospital anymore in Gaza because there are no hospitals. But if you could, I don't think anxiety would be the reason that you're showing up. And I don't think they would treat your anxiety when they've got people with blown off arms and people who, you know, they're uh, really terrible injuries, people who've been buried under the rubble. And they've dug them out, those types of injuries that they're that they're treating. But nonetheless, I could imagine that this is very scary. Um, Jordan did report some shrapnel falling on its territory, causing no significant damage or injuries. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to shoot down missiles that are flying over your territory, again, they're going to then rain down on your territory. And that's obviously going to cause um, that's going to cause some damage. So again, it's a little curious why Jordan decided to intervene in the way that they did. Minus the fact that they just really do not want there to be a war. So maybe they just thought, OK, we'll just intercept some of these missiles from Iran and, you know, Iran can kind of have its showy attack and then we can move forward. Now, Iran said that, yeah, that's all this would be because this attack concludes the retaliation. So that's it. We just wanted to retaliate after you hit our embassy, killed 16 of our people. We're this is the retaliation. What was significant about this attack is that this is the first time Iran itself directly attacked Israel since the start of the hostilities between the two countries going back to the mid-80s. So this is the very first time they directly attacked Israel, not going through some proxy. You know, Israel says, oh, they get us through Hezbollah, they get us through Hamas, or there's the Houthis. No, this is Iran hitting them for the very first time. Now, what everyone wants to know is, what now? So let's hear the IDF chief, and what he has to say is the next step. This is IDF chief of the general staff, uh, Herzi Halavi. He is saying that Israel is weighing its response. So Israel's looking at responding to the response to their initial strike, but watch this. Over the weekend, Iran launched a large-scale attack on Israel. Over 350 ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, armed drones, 
and rockets were fired from Iranian soil as well as Iraq, Yemen, and Lebanon towards the state of Israel. Across the skies of the Middle East, a coalition was activated to counter this attack, marking the start of the IDF's operation Iron Shield. The Israel Defense Forces, together with the United States Central Command, the British and the French Armed Forces and other partners operated together in real time, in the air, on the ground, and at sea. Defense systems were activated, the threats were intercepted, and Iran's attack on Israel failed. Operation Iron Shield proved the strength of our ironclad cooperation. I want to thank all our international partners who stood up to Iran's aggression. Iran's attack has created new opportunities for cooperation in the Middle East. We are closely assessing the situation. We remain at our highest level of readiness. Iran will face the consequences for its actions. We will choose our response accordingly. The IDF remains ready to counter any threat from Iran and its terror proxies as we continue our mission to defend the state of Israel. Okay, so what's interesting about this is a couple of things. First of all, they're saying, you know, he's reiterating that they plan to respond to the attack, that they're weighing their options. Now, all of the foreign countries like the United States, France, Europe, you know, European countries are saying, please don't, just don't. We don't really want this to escalate into a war. You hit them, they hit you back, fair and square. Okay, move on. Don't actually hit them back and cause a wider war. Um, Iran, however, their uh, deputy foreign minister for political affairs has come out saying that if Israel strikes back to their response, if they respond to the respond, that the response speed from Iran will be less than a few seconds. They're not going to wait. They're prepared. They're ready. So they're on high alert. They're fully ready. The U.S. air bases in the Middle East have been put on high alert and military readiness for, Im for imminent strikes. So right now, we are on the precipice of a large war in the Middle East. That is where we're at right now. Um, all of the military throughout the Middle East, be it Israeli military, Iranian military, American military, they're ready to pull the trigger. They're on high alert right now as we speak. So does this mean we're going to be going to war? Um, you know, this is a tough one to read. I did, however, say a couple of weeks ago after the Israelis hit the embassy in in uh, in Syria, killing the 16 Iranians, I did say that Iran would have no choice but to strike back. I, I they in pe the past have done uh, smaller smaller scale attacks, again more for show or you know not directly against Israel but ag against targets that are in other parts of the Middle East. Um, they've had proxies go after Israel. Like this is the first time that Iran has gone after Israel direct directly. In my opinion couple of weeks ago, that was their only option. They apparently agreed with that, right? Uh, they believed that that was their only option because that's the option they chose. So I do believe that Iran is ready for a big war. I think what Iran is has figured out is that the United States has not won a war in, uh, when was the last time we won a war? Besides World War II, which we were not alone in fighting. I don't, and Russia took the brunt of that. The United States has not proven that the United States is able to win wars. The reason is probably because, and this is what's really scary and what I want to really want to bring up, we fight wars very differently than we fought World War II. Uh, Israel isn't fighting a war that way. Israel is fighting a war very much in World War II style, carpet bombing entire regions, frightening entire people. That is typically how wars have been won. Now, it's not really winning with the Israelis against the Gazans. It's not. It, it's it's atrocious. It's treacherous. People are seeing how atrocious it is. And it's still not, uh, it's still not achieving their end goal, apparently. I mean, maybe you give it a little bit more time. I mean, after all, World War II was how many years long? 
But carpet bombing is the way, and I, I hate to say this out loud, but carpet bombing has been the way that wars were won. You had to just kind of go in and pummel everything. Hiroshima, right? They just went in, dropped a couple of nukes. So there's, I, I think Iran knows that the world has changed. People don't want to see those types of wars. People have no appetite for that. And people believe they're immoral because they are. There's better strategies. At least we should try better strategies. Um, and so I don't think that Iran is thinking that the U.S. is going to come in and carpet bomb Iran. I don't think they're thinking that Israel is going to carpet bomb them. And I think that they probably realize that no one has the ability to do it. They're probably pretty protected. It's really look, it's easy to carpet bomb the Gazans. Right? The Israelis have just shown, oh, look, we can carpet bomb a group of people that have no mighty military. During World War II, you had mighty militaries fighting mighty militaries. That was very different. The technology was way behind. These days, you've got high tech lots of satellites, and you've got mighty militaries, uh, I I Iran with their mighty military protecting itself. The Gazans didn't have that. So it's easy to go in and carpet bomb the Gazans. But that's, so what has the United States shown and what has Israel shown? They've shown that they have, the U.S. has shown that up against any group of people, be the unsophisticated, unsophisticated Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, guerrilla warfare fighters in Vietnam, the United States has not been able to win a war, even against the most unsophisticated of fighters. The Israelis also, unsophisticated fighters with the Gazans, unable to really uh, achieve their stated goals. So Iran, from their calculation, is like, I mean, look, they would have to come and try to, and try to carpet bomb us. They would have to come over here and try to terrorize us. They're not going to get through our defenses. We're sophisticated. We're mighty. There's no way they're going to be able to do anything to Iran that's worth really anything. Now, people might say, oh, well, they could drop a nuke. Well, yeah, my guess is that Iran is prepared if that were to happen. Maybe Iran doesn't have a nuclear program themselves. Maybe they do. We don't really know. They've been pretty good at keeping it. Well, it depends on who you talk to, right, on how secretive they've been on that. But they could surely procure a nuclear weapon if they needed to from one of their allies. Um, so... You know, Iran knows, I, I think they've, they've weighed this out and they're looking at it and they're thinking, you know, you've got Israel at war already with Hamas. They're strapped. Israel, on the other hand, is looking at Iran and saying, yeah, but your greatest ally is Russia and Russia's strapped because they're in a war. Um, but Iran is a mighty military and potentially really, I mean, especially if you take away the nuke question, which again, Iran might have some, whether they made them or whether they procured them or whether they've had allies that say, we'll back you up, it's unclear. But, you know, Iran is not going to be easy for, for Israel to strike. So they're weighing this out. I think they know what they're doing. Israel would love nothing more, though, to go to war with Iran. There's many people in America foaming at the mouth wanting to go to, go to war with Iran. Now would be the time if they're going to do it, because Iran has struck Israel directly, and for the first time, and also Russia's tied up in a war, and that's their greatest potential ally that would help them out if they were to go to war. Israel's looking at the United States and saying, you better help us out. The United States is saying, and, you know, we could all just kind of speculate that the U.S., that Joe Biden is saying, you better not, we're not going to be there. You'll, you'll be striking Iran alone if you do it. Yeah, why, well, of course the U.S. is going to say that, right? Joe Biden has been saying, you're going to, if you do it, look, Israel, you go after Iran, you're going after Iran alone. What else is Joe Biden going to say? Of course, the United States is going to be there helping Israel along, but the U.S. doesn't want to get hit by Iran. The U.S. doesn't really want to go to war with Iran. The U.S. just wants to back, again, it's like a proxy war. The U.S. just wants to back Israel in their war with Iran without actually directly going to war with Iran. Same thing with, with, with what we've been doing with Ukraine. Go after the, help the Ukrainians so that the Ukrainians can go after the Russians. We don't directly, at least not publicly, we're not directly saying that we're going up against you. The U.S. is going to play the same game. Can we sustain this? Uh, and that is another question that Iran probably is weighing out, is that the United States is funding a big war in Ukraine. So on their uh, right, again, you know, look, their greatest ally is fighting a war in Ukraine, but their greatest enemy is too. So now would be the time to strike. Israel is, I think, um, on weaker footing on this one because they're at war and their greatest ally is funding another big war and not really will. And they should see that, look, they're not in NATO, just like Ukraine's not in NATO. We don't have to help you. And if we don't have to, we probably won't. 
There's no actual commitment there between Israel and the United States, just like there's none between Ukraine and the United States. So are we going to go to a bigger war? Um, no, I don't. That, my, my final, that's my final ruling on this. I do not think this will actually escalate into a war when you start weighing it all out, the pros and the cons for each. When you start really looking at it, I just I think that Iran has figured out that they've 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 played their cards. They understand. And well, I don't think they've played all their cards. I think they've got plenty more to play. But I think they know that they know that you know, they've got plenty more to play. So I don't think we're going into a wider war. I just think things are going to be really tense for quite some time right now. And then I think Israel will continue its onslaught into Gaza. Sadly, terribly um, and miserably.